The British Interior Minister Suella Braverman has arrived in Rwanda. She is in Kigali to discuss an agreement regarding the migrant situation. Now, according to this agreement, the UK will be relocating migrants arriving without any prior permission to Rwanda. Since its inception, the plan has been mired in legal challenges and controversy. Now, Braverman was received by the Clementine Mukeka, the permanent secretary to Rwanda's foreign ministry, and the British High Commissioner to Rwanda, Omar Diar. Now, as a part of a $146 million deal last year, Britain agreed to send tens of thousands of migrants more than 6,400 kilometers away to Rwanda. Though no flights have taken off as of now, as the policy stands challenged in the courts by opponents. Now, Braverman will also be meeting the Rwandan president, Paul Kagame, and she said that the move to send migrants and refugees to Rwanda could be put into action shortly. The partnership is a major part of Britain's plans to detain and deport asylum seekers arriving in small boats across the Channel. Some charities are calling this proposal impractical. They are concerned that it would criminalize the efforts of thousands of genuine refugees. Now, the British government has defended the new policy, saying it will stop illegal human trafficking in the contentious region. The partnership was announced in April of last year, but the first deportation flight was blocked by an injunction from a European Court of Human Rights. London's High Court ruled it unlawful in uh, December while signaling further legal battles ahead. Now, the opponents are seeking to appeal that verdict in April. It could also go to Britain's Supreme Court later in the year. Describing her opponents as naive do-gooders, Braverman has robustly defended her approach. She further added that the deal will undermine the business model of people smuggling networks. The British government has insisted that the policy is needed to stop the all too often deadly crossing of the Channel from France. After a record 45,000 people arrived in Britain last year on small boats. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has said that finding a solution for the migrant situation is one of his top priorities. Now, for more on this, we are being joined live by Adam Schwartz from London, who is a writer and a political commentator. Adam, thank you for being with us. How is this move being seen in the UK? Well, I think it really depends on which side of the political aisle you are. I mean, I would start off by saying that it is actually very historically uh, unusual for a Home Secretary to be going on such a high profile uh, overseas visit. Uh, normally, these kinds of visits are reserved for either the Foreign Secretary or the Prime Minister. Uh, but Braverman has said that uh, really the purpose of her visit uh, is to try to reinforce the UK's commitment for the Rwanda plan. Uh, so as you mentioned during your very comprehensive introduction, uh, she, uh, she will be meeting the President of Rwanda and also visiting some of the sites that will be used uh, supposedly to host some of the migrants. Um, however, I think if you, uh, you know, dig a little bit deeper into the kind of details of the nature of the visit that really kind of reveals the ultimate purpose of what what this visit is really for um, and I think ultimately to my mind this is sort of a uh, political stunt uh, paid for ultimately by the taxpayers to try to extract as much kind of political capital as much uh, as possible for, for a domestic audience and I think the real evidence for that is the fact that uh, only uh, government-friendly news sources were actually invited to accompany Braverman uh, as part of the news delegation. Uh, the BBC and The Guardian, which tend to be much more critical uh, of the government's uh, sort of migrant strategy, were not invited at all. I think, you know, given the fact that, you know, Britain, is, of course, is an open, transparent democracy, I think this is a very uh, surprising element to it. And I think really that kind of demonstrates actually a much wider part of the problem with the whole government's migration strategy, 
which you know again to my mind is is more of a kind of publicity PR campaign than actually a policy in its own right uh, because I think ultimately uh, you know the government knows that it's actually very unlikely that the Rwanda strategy and the illegal migration bill that was uh, unveiled a few weeks ago is actually going to be implemented in full uh, and I think you know as you mentioned the courts are currently dealing with uh, the uh, issue of the Rwanda plan, and we're, we're likely to see more of that for the rest of the year. I think there are major impracticalities to the plan, uh, just due to the fact that, you know, we had 45,000 people crossing the channel into the UK last year. And it's ultimately just not going to be practical to try to uh, transfer people in the tens of thousands uh, to Rwanda. Uh, and I think there are also sort of just questions over actually, you know, how the kind of inconsistencies within the plan. For example, you know, Braverman has insisted that that uh, Rwanda remains a safe country and that it's a great place for migrants to start a new life. But at the same time, the government is saying that actually the Rwanda plan will serve as a, uh, a deterrent for more migrants to come to the UK. So ultimately, there's an inconsistency because if ultimately, you know, there's, there's no threat to migrants if they go into a place which is going to be uh, great for them. So ultimately, I think, you know, to my mind and many others in the UK, this is just sort of part of a general strategy by the government to try to distract from many of the domestic, particularly economic woes that we're facing here in the UK. Uh, but ultimately, I don't think it's one that will provide uh, enough political capital for the Conservatives to turn around, uh, you know, the next election result, which will likely produce a, a different government. Right. Now, Adam, as you've touched on, from the perspective of these asylum seekers, they are anyway moving from conflict-ridden countries. How would they see this move to Rwanda? It seems somewhat ironic. I think that's absolutely right. I mean, it's very difficult to, to say overall, you know, what migrants and refugees, how would they would look at this? Because, of course, each case is different depending on the individual, depending on, you know, whatever nature of, uh, of conflict or persecution they are fleeing from. But I think, you know, ultimately, you know, it all comes down to perception of Britain. And I think this actually goes beyond the view of the asylum seeker or the migrant. But actually, you know, Britain was for quite a long time viewed as being quite an open and a tolerant society that really valued what, uh, you know, uh, uh, migration and asylum seekers can bring to the UK, both economically and culturally. And I think the fact that, you know, Britain, uh, through the lens of this current Conservative government, uh, seems to be really doing everything it possibly can to try to uh, change that perception of Britain as no longer being a uh, welcome, welcoming country. I think really, uh, you know, it's quite a drastic turn in, in how Britain used to be seen. Uh, but I, I ultimately don't think that this will be, you know, uh, successful in trying to uh, deter people from coming to the UK. I think ultimately, you know, people are in such desperate situations around the world due to conflict, due to uh, climate change, that actually they're in situations where they can't afford to, uh, you know, not come to countries which they perceive to be uh, potentially safe for them. Uh, obviously, you know, no migrants or refugees or asylum seekers have actually been sent to uh, Rwanda yet. So we don't really know what their experiences would be. Um, however, we do know that only uh, 21 uh, people were actually returned to their countries of origin. So that re represents about 0.1% of the overall number of people that came to the UK uh, on small boats uh, last year. So, you know, clearly the kind of uh, the story that the government is trying to uh, project that actually people will be returned to where they came from is not really going to be practical on a, on a legal and also a, uh, a practical level. Right. Adam, thank you very much for joining us and your valuable insights there. Good to be with you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.